Hello and welcome. Hope you've had a great week. Sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Off the Bench proudly brought to you by Victoria's Greyhounds. Come to the races day or night and enjoy all the excitement of greyhound racing. Make sure you visit gov.org.au for more information. We have a massive show as we do every week. Ros Lundigan will join us with a sharp focus on the central Victoria area of the state. We also have a very special guest. He was a Hawthorne star and doing some great things with Vic Country. That is Peter Knights. We've got the GRV Challenge, which starts tonight. Pickers and I go head-to-head to win some clash, cash for your club, I should say. The wheel is back and another great feature story to uh, finish off the show. 97, best in Ferris with the Cats. 95, Brownlow favourite. Got no votes. Welcome, Lenny Pickering. It's running out of steam. I know. Every I love week. it. Absolutely Hello, love it. Hey, I'm hey, fantastic. Hey, very good to be here. Looking forward to getting into the... The chat with our guest mm. because uh, he's one of the legends and mm. I grew up around that time as we all did. You're yes. about the same age as me. Yep. Or maybe you're a bit older, you've got no hair, but apart from that, you know, I think we're pretty much the same age. Mm. So we mm. grew up watching the, yes. the great players in the 70s and 80s. Yes. So I reckon we roll straight into it, old Yeah, mate. absolutely. As a Hawthorne supporter, as a kid, I loved this bloke. He was a high flyer. He could kick goals. He could do it all. The duels between uh, this man and Paul Vanderhaar yes, are legendary. legendary. Yep. Well, let's get straight into welcoming our special guest. We've had him on a couple of times, but you can never get sick of this man. That is Peter Knights. Welcome, Knightsy. Swatter, great to be here. Pickers, thanks very much. It's good to have you, Pete. Now, as I said, we, we grew up watching those famous days when you were playing for Hawthorne. And, and the, the 1970s was really Hawthorne and North Melbourne. What a famous rival yeah. you had. Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, we had a reunion just last week, actually, as we do. Lucky enough to have had a few. Um, <laughs> 76, uh, great year. Uh, great for the Hawks. We defeated the, uh, the Kangas. But one of the things about between 73, 4, 5 and 6, 7 and 8, Hawthorne and North Melbourne played each other 20 times. So in five seasons, 20 times, home and away and finals. So you can understand the rivalry that Hawthorne and North had, but the respect as well that both clubs had for each other. You had uh, Swatter talked about, and there's some great photos here. I mean, that was Peter Crimmins, obviously, just after you won the after, flag in 76. After 76, yeah. A few of us went out to his place, unfortunately. Um, shared the uh, highlights of the grand final, the premiership with him, but he passed away uh, about 48 hours later. So, to this day, that 76 cup is known as Crimmins. Mm. Yeah. yeah, really well said. Got a fair honour roll too, Pickers, as yeah. uh, 90. Few yeah. awards here well, and there. Well, it's funny we were talking about it off off air before. I mean, Two hundred and one goals. You played centre half back. How'd that happen? Well, I was a pretty attacking sort of centre half back. <laughs> mate. Um, look, uh, the first two thirds of my career, I was at centre half back. When Jeansy came and coached us in '81, he said, "Nightsy, we need you to head forward." Um, got a couple of young blokes like Brereton and Dunstall starting. Need you to be a bit of a mentor yep. with those sort of guys. So I ended up playing cross half forward for about the last five years of my career and. Kicked a few goals as a result. My word, you did. I know we're going to get into some coaching stuff as well with, with you, uh, Peter, but uh, your toughest opponent, Swatter so talked about the famous duels with Paul Van. Just yeah. briefly, who, who were the toughest opponents for you? Yeah, well, look, at, at centre-half back, when I was playing there, you come up against great centre-half forwards all the time. Like, even in my first couple of years, I played on Royce Hart. Now, you know, he was a legend. We all know about that. But to play against him, but the likes of Robert Walls, Mark McClure... Um, Bernie Quinlan, uh, there were plenty of great centre-half forwards playing. Then when I went to play at centre-half forward, probably the best centre-half back that I played on was Ross Glenn Denning, yeah. probably a teammate of you guys. Mm. Uh, just a wonderful player, great, uh, great centre-half back. Probably played the centre-half back position like I played it when I was playing at centre-half back yeah. the, the year before. So great players week in and week out. Geez, there's some big name legends but there. Vander, but you just... mentioned Vander as well. Yeah. I have to put Vander in or actually <laughs> yeah. he'd never forgive me. <laughs> hey, good a great evening to Paul Vander too if he's watching, no doubt he is. <laughs> hey, uh, let's talk about your post-footy career. You went in, uh, you went on to coach the Brisbane Lions and then the, you coached Hawthorne and then you've ended up coaching Vic Country for the last seven years. We'll talk about that shortly. But what are your memories of, these were tough days, the Brisbane Bears in particular? Yeah, Brisbane Bears, 1987, the national competition kicks off, uh, West Coast Eagles come in, but all of a sudden you hear that there's going to be this new club playing in a foreign land, AFL club out of Brisbane, out of Queensland, uh, unheard of. And when I was first asked to do the job, um, five months before the first round of 1987, <laughs> and we were going to be playing North as well, and of course John Kennedy was the coach of North at that particular stage, so look, it was just a wonderful opportunity for me, it was exciting challenging in an era of private ownership. We all know about that sort of uh, era. So look, as, as much as it was tough and exciting, um, the Brisbane Bears over those three to four years performed pretty well. We won six games in our first year, seven in our second, eight in our third. So it wasn't too bad when you consider we had no concessions, we had no favours, no handouts from the AFL. They virtually took the 
well, took the licence money, six million dollars, and ran and said, "Here, do the job." Well, yeah, the, we we all remember playing up there back in the day, uh, Swatter. Uh, talk to talk us about your, your role. Talk us through your role with the country because it's seven or eight years now as the coach, and this is your last one. Yeah, look, I've had a wonderful innings with Vic Country. Uh, prior to my coaching the senior squad, um, I was actually coaching the under-18s, under-19s for nine years. So I've had a real long relationship with Vic Country, being a country boy myself. And then the last eight years with the senior side, it's just been wonderful. You know, through an era where we had Vic Victorian Championships, we had Australian Country Championships where we'd go to Canberra or to New South Wales and play against the best country players from all around Australia. So just a great time for me and uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it and some wonderful players. And this year um, will be my final year and we come up against Vic Metro, which yeah. is a, a new concept, best players out of Vic Metro, a lot of great leagues, a lot of great clubs there. and. That's a bit of an opportunity to have a look at the list that we've got. Actually, we've trimmed the squad down a little bit to about 30 now. It was at about 40 initially, about five weeks ago, and now we're down to about 30 with two sessions to go. How's uh, Young Monkey? We had, uh, yeah. we had Monkey on the other week in our first show, didn't we, Swatter? We did. He's young Monkey. How's he Big Monkey. Man? Big Monkey's doing well with the Hawks, of course, yeah. but Young Monkey's <laughs> doing pretty well with Warri Alec up in the um, Yarra Valley League. And look, one thing about that league, it's hard and tough. Is it ever? I went and watched the game a couple of weeks ago um, against Wandon and just traditional rivals. And I will say Monkey played well, centre-half forward that day, uh, lead, lead up centre-half half forward, really good young player. Hey, uh, you've uh, got a game against Vic Metro yep. and that is uh, July 10 at Preston City Oval, so we wish you well. There's yeah, uh, country you. pride on the line, Knights, you know what you need to do. Yeah, best from the bush versus the best from the city, so yep. it'd be great to go out with yeah, a win. Um, well we've got a really good squad and all passionate to represent Vic Country and that's the important thing, well, but, but Vic Metro are going to be tough. Brian War Royal's their coach, Shocko, so he'll be keen to knock the country boys off. Uh, you've had a, I mean, you probably get told this all the time, you've had a great career as a player, but you've also done great things uh, post-footy with regards to Coaching, so we appreciate and applaud you for what you've done. Good luck with your last remaining game in charge. And you don't go empty-handed. Uh, Monkey's still trying to work out how he fits into this stuff, but we're going to give you $100 worth <laughs> of St. Goliath clothing, <laughs> combining street trends with easy-to-wear style. St. Goliath is available at Meyer and Edge clothing stores right across the country. We appreciate you coming in. Thanks, Wada. Thanks, there you guys. Go. Peter Knights, what an absolute <laughs> superstar. We take a break. When we come back, Country Footy's first lady, Ros Lanigan, and we have a look at the Central Vic area of the state. Off the bench with more coming up next. Next. Back to Off the Bench, proudly brought to you by Victoria's Greyhounds with 13 Greyhound community clubs right across the state. Well, now it's time to literally head around the state. Yeah, it's time to introduce Country Footy's first lady. No one knows Country Footy better than this lady, and that is Ros Lunding. And welcome back, Ros. Thank you. Great to be here again. Central Victoria is where we're focusing. Yes, we're going to start up around the Bendigo region. In fact, we're going to start in the Bendigo Footy League, where Strathfield say had a win over Castlemaine last weekend. Castlemaine actually kept up with the reigning premiers for the first quarter on Saturday, but the Storm got in their bikes after that to win by 50 points in that Round 10 clash. Tom Bartholomew, Matthew Harvey, Shannon Geary in a best on ground performance all booted four goals for the Storm and Jay Cole chipped in with another three. Mark Ramsey kicked four for Castlemaine. Now it's the second time these two clubs met this year and it was an improved showing from the Magpies who lost by 91 points in Round 2, so a bit better effort this time. Now they're 5-5 five and five, Castlemaine with eight rounds to play before finals and they'll need to beat at least one of the next three games they play, Kyneton, Golden Square or Sandhurst, but all above them on the ladder. But they'll need to win one of those if they want to play finals. Strathfield say behind the ladder leaders, Golden Square just on percentage, and the two heavyweights will actually go head-to-head -head next round on July 9 after this weekend's league bye. That's a huge game. Don't ride off Kyneton in that game. What about up my way? The Grasshoppers! The Grasshoppers in the Maryborough Castle Main District Footy League. Grasshoppers were winners by 11 points over Natty Bialaba. Now this was their 50th straight win. How many? Which is just unbelievable. They're on the verge of creating country footy history. But for the first time in a long time, the Hoppers had to do it the hard way. They were down by 10 points at three quarter time, but found another gear in the last term, kicked four goals to one in the last to get the win. Now, the game certainly lived up to its blockbuster status as well. Now, Navarre, with that 50 wins, they have to win this weekend to claim the record for the longest ever winning streak in country Victoria of 51 games. They have to 
beat Royal Park. Have a look wow. at the ladder. Also undefeated. So another clash between two undefeated teams this weekend. So really, really massive game for the boys at Navarre. Let's have a look at the Loddon Valley Football League. Bridgewater pretty much cemented to the top of the table in this league. They've won six flags on the trot and they're on their way to a seventh. Still undefeated after 10 rounds and they boast an average winning margin this season of 15 goals. They beat second place Midiamo by 23 points in round five after trailing by a couple of goals at quarter time. Now Midiamo, the Super Roos, were of course last year's runner up and they lost the grand final by 56 points but they'll get another crack at Bridgewater in round 14 and in finals. And the Heathcote District Footy League, extremely <laughs> tight at the top of the table. Sixth round to play before finals get underway. Huntley, Leachville, Gumbauer and the reigning premiers North Bendigo locked on nine wins apiece and Colburn Avon just a game behind. Right, I breathe, breathe, breathe. <laughs> right, not through it, yeah, good. Becca, turn your little man a breath here. Never. Bit of a breath, right. What are we doing here? Talk okay. about the Dairy Day event at Cobden, please. Yes, it was the inaugural Dairy Day. At, it was held on Cobden on Saturday. It was the game between Cobden and Caroit. Caroit were winners by uh, 12 points in the end. Now, there were some famous faces here. Kevin Sheedy, Merv Hughes, Dave Hughes and John Rantel. It was attended by about 180 farmers and their families from around the district. Now, the initiative was started by AFL Victoria, WorkSafe Victoria, Dairy Australia and the AFL Western District Group as well to support the local dairy community. Obviously, the dairy industry doing it incredibly tough at the moment and they got some more bad news with another um, bad news about the milk price this yeah. week. So it's a tough time for the dairy farming families and great to see country footy getting behind their, their dairy farming friends. Yeah, love the no spirit doubt. that country people show when people need a bit of support. So well done to everybody involved. Now, uh, under-16 game last week, yeah. I'm led to believe one B, 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 Billy Brownless's son was best on ground. Am I right in saying that? He was amongst the best for Vic Country's yeah. under-16 team, Oscar. Dad, he's BOG. <laughs> Clearly best on ground, just Young pumping Oscar. his price up. <laughs> it was a 20-point win to Vic Country over Vic Metro in their first game of the NAB under-16 championships. That was down at Simmons Stadium, so Oscar was on his uh, home turf he was. down in Geelong. The Country boys were down by a goal at quarter time, but they kicked four goals to two in the second term to snatch the lead and then went on with it from there. Jai Caldwell was best on ground for Vic Country. He had 27 touches in the midfield and was solid all day. He's a boy from Bendigo and Wodonga's Hudson Garoni booted five goals for the country boys. So they've started well, beating Metro in their first game. They did, and it was uh, Scotty Westboy. I see he was in the best for uh, the Metro side as well. What about the GRV news? What are we what rolling here? Yes, now I want you to keep your eyes out for a promising young greyhound called Mr. Eyes. He's been recruited to top trainer Anthony as a party's stable at uh, Bacchus Marsh. He is now. He's coming down from New South Wales. Now, Mr. Eyes has had uh, three starts. Two wins, and he'll race at the Meadows tomorrow night. So keep your eye on him, picks. I will be. Um, and Sunday, a big race of grey, big day of greyhound racing around Country Victoria. Healesville will host the heats of its Winter Cup on Sunday, and the Horsham Cup finalist Fleet Return will contest one of two feature finals at Sale. So a big day of greyhound racing on Sunday. I'll tell you what, we may have to have a oxygen mask. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> because I don't know so how you get through. through, so much you get through without taking a single breath. Hey, well, uh, well done. You know what's coming up next, don't you, Picks? Yeah, we've got another. We've the got a GRV Club Challenge. You, me, <laughs> like the good old days when head I used to, to get BOG and you tried to stop me getting a lot of touches. <laughs> we're going head to head, and if we win, some of that cash goes to a country football club. That's how we like to roll. Yeah, we've got to take They're a givers. break. Well done. Generous. We've only just started doing that. <laughs> we weren't like that when we were younger. Hey, Roz, thanks very much for joining us. When we come back, the GRV Club Challenge and another great feature story. Off the bench with more coming up next. Welcome back to the show, brought to you by Victoria's Greyhounds with 13 Greyhound community clubs across the state. Now, Picks, the GRV Club Challenge is coming up very shortly. It you is. and I are going head to head. I'm looking forward to it. And if we win some cash, it's going back to another country football club. So look forward to that. But right now, it's another great feature story. And Graham Whitford is a man that combines two packages or two passions in his life. That is Greyhound Racing and his local footy club. Let's take a look at his story. Greyhounds probably have nearly been a lifetime thing for me. When I was in primary school, my two brothers brought a greyhound home. Being a younger brother, I got the job of um, walking after school and feeding after school while they went off to their um, footy training and various things as bigger brothers do. They're um, probably the most loyal animal you would ever meet. They are docile, they are friendly, calm, quiet, just a, a basically 
lovely animal. Probably my favourite dog would probably be Roadrunner because he was my first group runner um, in, a, in a group race, and that's many years ago. Recent times, the Zambora dogs, I mean, obviously Zambora Blue Boy, um, first Waterloo Cup winner, um, something very special. He won at both city tracks and took us to country cups. Zambora Blue Boy won his second Waterloo Cup for us. He'd won one before we bought him. Now the dog, Riley's Marshall, won it last year. Um, two Waterloo Cups in three years, which financially is good, but you know, the prestige of winning two Waterloo Cups is great because there aren't probably a lot of people that have, that have won it twice and we'll endeavour to win it a few more times before we retire. I don't know if we'll be able to, but we'll try. Graham's like a patriarch of the football club. He's a historian, he knows everything that ever happened. He knows everyone that was ever involved. He knows most of our opponents and um, key members of, of league hierarchy around. He's been around forever and he's done most of the jobs in our footy club over a long period of time. From when I was a junior and found that my talent was probably very negligible, uh, have probably been pretty much in all forms of administration and probably like everybody in small country towns, probably done pretty much everything in the club. Still does the odd jobs around the place in the kitchen. Though I'm reliably informed he's not that handy in there um, and, and in the bar and other places around uh, the footy club. Love being around people, it's a, it's a social thing and um, probably it, it, it's an add on to the greyhounds and the greyhounds are people that you go and talk greyhounds to and you go to the footy and you talk all different forms of life, it's just a, a different social atmosphere in the town. Yarram is actually a great greyhound racing community and a long tradition in our club of people involved with greyhounds, the, the Davis family. Uh, and the Alford family are, are two, for example, Brian Alford, one of our past presidents, and the Davis family, starting from Sonny uh, down to his children, have all had uh, multiple greyhounds and are very successful trainers as well. So uh, a long history in our club of connections with greyhounds and football. My probably major things that I want to achieve in life with both forms of sport now are probably pretty much there. I'm pretty happy with, with what I've achieved in, in both sports. I would like to see the Yarram Football Club remains strong. In Greyhounds, look, you, you just look to train your next winner and I'm just happy with my lot. You know, he talks a lot about his dogs and he's got their nicknames for them and they're, of course, his, his great favourites. Um, he's a bit more reserved when giving us advice as to which ones to bet and not. So, you know, we wish there would be a bit more intelligence come forthcoming at the right occasions, but the only thing that's going to keep him away from the footy is the dogs and um, they're a really important part of his life. and. Um, yeah, he gives us the odd tip, so you know, we, we've got to keep in the good books with him in that respect. Yeah, just another local country legend, well done Graham, and if you've got a dog running it's a good thing, then let me know because <laughs> uh, the GRV Club Challenge is on very shortly. More about that uh, uh, soon. The uh, connection between country footy and greyhounds is pretty strong. You've actually got a personal connection already, do you not? Yeah, we do. On Off the bench, uh, the radio program, Craig Hutchison, myself and Dr Turf run. Uh, mm. We have a partnership with uh, Greyhound Racing Victoria, which is great, and we give away a 10% share in a nice. greyhound each week to some lucky caller. So. As part of our Doctor Who quiz, which is uh, which is a bit of fun, so they've been great partners of our program for sure. Yeah, fantastic. Righto, pickers, it's on. This is the GRV Club Challenge, and the team that is getting a thousand bucks, irrespective of whether you and I can pick a winning dog this weekend, is the Navarre Footy Club. And what a what a run they're having! Well, they have, and this weekend they're shooting for the uh, the big country record, 51 wins in a row. They're up against the Royal Park Tigers, mm -hmm. so they, it's not going to be an easy one. They're undefeated as well, but I think that the uh, Grasshoppers yep. can get the job done there, Swatter. And, well, I can tell you right now, yeah. um, I'm looking forward to uh, your dog and oh, my yeah. dog and seeing who's the, who's the better judge in a, in right. a lot of ways. Well, the Navarre Footy Club already get a 1,000, irrespective. I'm going for an up-and-coming young dog. Meet Titan, jumping out of box eight, ran a really fast time in Ballarat from box seven, likes the outside boxes, and I'm going to the tab to put on a lazy 500 uh, on the nose. I'll join you at the tab uh, and also have a little go at the inside because you're an outside sort of worker when you yeah, play. You've gone bo box eight. I'm going with <laughs> Van T Gun, who, of course, down in class water and mm. has a city placing, so... I'm very comfortable in Van T Gun, so mm. I think between us, mm. we're going to get some chocolates and a little bit of cash. Mm. And that's uh, going to the Navarre Footy Club, Navarre Footy Club which, is, which is brilliant. So it's a great, great initiative. Looking forward to it. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, the wheel pickers does his thing, and we've got the odds for William Hill, and then we wrap up the show. Back with more after this. It 
It's our favourite part of the show, the Celebrate at the Country Races Wheel, with lots of goodies to be won each and every week. And the major prize, a $2,500 marquee package at the Kilmore Cup later this year, and that'll be drawn on our Grand Final Eve show. But we need contestants in order to spin the wheel each and every week, so get your entry in and all the information about celebrating at the Country Races at countryracing.com.au. And this week we're playing for Greg Taylor, who's at Romsey. So good luck to you, Greg. I'm going to give it a really big spin for you, old mate, and see how we go. Come on, pigs. There we go. Come on. Is that a liner? That's no, not a liner. Sure. It's a sports bag with the lot. Mm -hmm. It's got your sports towel. It's got your camping chair. It's got the whole lot. It's yeah. got the whole kit and caboodle. A couple of stubby so. holders, a jacket. You'll lot. need a jacket in Romsey. Greggy boy, a cooler bag and a beanie. So, uh, well done, and uh, that is nicely done. So keep getting your entries in, countryracing.com.au. Pickers, there's some big games coming this weekend, so it's time now for all the odds, brought to you by William Hill Online Racing and Sports Betting. William Hill, faster, easier betting. OK, and we'll start off at the Gold Coast, because uh, it's going to be a good game. Gold Coast are favourites, and killed it with a great win over Geelong last week. I do think the Gold Coast are getting back into form. Really short Sydney. Bulldogs will give plenty of cheek there. The line looks to me the obvious bet. Bulldogs at the line on that one. Uh, Carlton, well, I think they can beat Collingwood. So I don't think Collingwood are going all that well. I know they beat Fremantle last week's swatter, but yep. I think the Blues can bounce back. And Adelaide, nice and short against the Demons, who are in good form. Yeah, they're a real chance. That's a G. The MCG. Yeah. I'd like to play for, obviously, a year since Phil uh, Walsh's death. Uh, Lance Franklin, very short to win the Coleman medal. Jerk and Jenkins took $21. Mm. He's got to be some chance if he gets a bag in the next couple of weeks, mate. Yep. Uh, doesn't uh, have any issues getting forward of the ball, big Jerk and Jenkins. No, he, uh, he does like to get the ball over the back a bit. Mm. He's a very good player, but he's having a fabulous season. Hey, uh, good luck to the Navarre Footy Club. Who yeah, are they playing this weekend? Uh, they're playing the Royal Park Tigers. Yep. And looking forward to seeing the Grasshoppers get home there, of course, from up around my way, which is good. So it would be good to see them win. And good luck to meet Titan 500 on the nose to win. And that cash is going to the Navarre Footy Club. Club. Who are you on? Van T Gun. Don't ride off Van T. I think we get the chockies. All right, let's be gentlemen. Good luck to your dog. Good luck to you. All right, Don't have a great really weekend. It. Football, netball clubs. Good luck to your teams this weekend. Stay safe on the roads. Pickers, Roz and myself be back same time next week. See you then.